As you might have already guessed from the intro video, our topic for today is ultrafiltration. So before we dive into, into ultrafiltration directly, let's do a background check of the basics of filtration. Looking at the definitions first, we see filtration which is the removal of solid particles from a fluid by passing the fluid through a filtering medium or septum on which the solids are deposited. Cross filtration is a filtration process which feed water flows tangentially across the membrane surface. Ultrafiltration on the other hand is a variety of membrane filtration in which forces like pressure or concentration gradients lead to a separation through a semi permeable membrane. Now on the basis of nature of filtration, we see that we can divide the filters into three classes namely cake filters, clarifying filters, cross flow filters. In cake filters, at the start of filtration, some particles enter the pores of the medium and are immobilized but soon others begin to collect on the septum of the surface. So after a brief initial period, it is actually the cake of solid that does the filtration and not the septum. The layer of cake should be cleared periodically and as you might remember we have seen the details of cake filtration including the formulas and all in our mechanical operations course of semester 3. So not going into those details, we next move on to clarifying filters. Clarifying filters are used to remove small amounts of solids or liquid droplets from either liquids or gases. The particles are trapped inside the filter medium or on the surfaces. Moving on to cross flow filters, cross flow filters mainly covers those filtration processes where the feed of suspension flows under pressure at fairly high velocity across the filter medium. We come across terms like microfiltration, ultrafiltration which is our topic and hyperfiltration in this type of filtration. As we have seen, ultrafiltration is basically a membrane filtration phenomena. So the nature and the quality of membrane would play a pivotal role in it. The membranes should have high porosity, narrow pore size distribution, asymmetric and generally we tend to prefer asymmetric membranes with thin selective skin supported on a thicker layer with large pore size. The image on the right is a, actually a cross-sectional view of ultrafiltration membrane taken from a research paper by Yazoo et al. Here you can see the pores and the partitions of the membrane that are generally used for ultrafiltration. Moving on to the polymers that are used in membrane processes, nowadays we do see, get to see a variety of polymers being used for the same starting from cellulose acetate, cellulose triacetate, polyvinyl alcohol, polysulfone, polyamide, porous carbon of alumina, polyether sulfone. Rejection is an important phenomena for ultrafiltration membranes as the ultrafiltration membrane tend to reject particles based on the molecular weight. Molecules larger than the cutoff size are almost completely neglected. The graph on the right that you see shows the fraction rejected with the molecular weight for 10 and 30 pm. This has also been taken from a research paper and a word of caution, these data might vary from case to case as the fraction rejected for a given molecular size varies with solvent permeation rate, shear rate near the surface and the extent of membrane fouling. As we saw in the previous slide, we can define rejection alternatively as molecular weight cutoff or MWCO which refers to the molecular weight of a solute macromolecule that can be separated from a solution. In general, membranes don't exhibit a sharp MWCO. The graph that you see here is actually taken from Datta's textbook, shows a comparison between sharp cutoff membranes and diffuse cutoff membranes. For sharp cutoff membranes, as you can see, the fractional retention almost changes as a step function. Within a small molecular range, the retention value changes from 0 to 1. But for diffuse membranes, the retention changes gradually over a wider range of molecular weight, as can be seen. So we generally expect most membranes with wide pore size to be technically correct to follow a phenomena that is more like diffuse membranes rather than sharp cutoff membranes. Before moving on to the crux of ultrafiltration and the formulas, first let's see the principles and working of ultrafiltration. The basic operation of ultrafil ultrafiltration 
uses the principle of a pressure induced separation of solutes from a solvent through a semi permeable membrane so as you can see in the diagram we apply some pressure and the suspended solids and solutes of high molecular weight are retained and water and the low molecular weight solvents pass through this membrane the solid that is retained by the membrane is termed as retentate and that that passes through the membrane is termed as permeate the relationship between the applied pressure on the solution to be separated and the flux through the membrane is most commonly described by darcy's equation as you can see here uh, darcy's equation numerically states that j which is basically the flux is equals to equal to the transmembrane pressure divided by the viscosity and the total resistance we will look into details of the total resistance in the next slide so the total resistance that i was talking about in the previous slide would actually be the sum of the membrane resistance which is quite obvious to arise and the fouling resistance talking about fouling resistance would be where we need to talk about the phenomena of membrane fouling membrane fouling is actually defi defined as a deposition of retained particles colloids macromolecules salts etc at the membrane surface or on the pore mouth or on the pore wall causing a steep decline in the input flux the diagram that you show here uh, that you see here is actually the cross sectional view of a membrane this is where we would face the membrane resistance but besides that we also see a deposition of cake layer so the incoming water molecules besides facing the membrane resistance would also have to face the resistance that is offered by the cake which we also term as the fouling resistance in this zoom picture you see how the pores are blocked or even sometimes due to sur surface configurations the uh, the molecules get adsorbed into the pore walls thus causing re resistance to the flow fouling can be caused by broadly three kinds of substances they are namely organic substances which includes macromolecules and biological substances like proteins enzymes etc or inorganic substances like metal hydroxides or salts and particulate or the particulate matter that, that may be present in the feed moving on to the types of fouling we mainly have three types of fouling they are firstly particulate deposition which refer to the standard blocking by of molecules on the pore walls pore mouth or the formation of cake layers then we have scaling examples of which we have seen in our equipment design course so scaling is basically a result of concentration polarization on the membrane surface due to which precipitation occurs on the membrane surface these organic salt deposits block the pores causing a decline in the flux then we have biofouling where microorganisms adhere to the membrane surface forming a gel which is often called as biofilm these are mostly seen in biological equipments or terms related to biology so as you might have concluded by now this membrane fouling is not something that we would desire and so time and often we necessarily need to clean them with this we gradually move on to the more mechanical part or the more equation driven part of this topic through which lavanya would be taking you on so now we we'll resume with the configuration of an ultra filtration unit in the figure the two configurations of an ultra filtration unit which are quite common are shown the second one being the tapered configuration and the a1 being the recycle configuration in a recycle configuration a part of the retentate stream is recycled back to the inlet of the module to achieve a higher concentration of the retentate the strategy also increases cross flow velocity and thereby reduces membrane fouling in the other configuration the modules are arranged in parallel series pattern since the retentate volume decreases after the liquid passes through a module a lesser number of modules is provided in the successive stages regarding the permeate flux as we can see for a clear membrane the water is assumed to pass through a small pores of the selective layer by laminar flow where the driving force is the pressure difference delta p minus the difference in osmotic pressures across the membrane that is delta pi 
and so from a hagen poiseuille equation the volume flux is given as the first equation and for the flux of pure water at room temperature per unit pressure drop is given as the second equation since it is difficult to get the independent measurements of epsilon d tau and l for use here but their collective can be taken through the membrane permeability qm now we move on to another important discussion regarding concentration polarization the osmotic pressure difference delta pi depends on the solute concentration at the membrane surface which is much greater than the bulk concentration particularly if the permeate flux is high and the solute diffusivity is low the adjoining figure shows the concentration gradients for a ultrafiltration system with partial rejection of the solute the concentration just inside the pores cm is lower than the concentration at the surface cs by the factor k which is the equilibrium partition coefficient for boundary conditions we obtain the second equation in case when the solute is completely rejected then our c2 becomes zero and we can use the third equation for lower values of flux cs can be predicted from the third equation and then using the osmotic pressure data to get delta pi and delta p can be calculated if delta p is specified then a trial and error method may be opted through both methods it is concluded that flux should be nearly proportional to delta p for lower values of delta p but the flux changes rapidly with pressure at moderate pressure ranges the flux eventually reaches a peak independent of delta p because at that point cs is equals to cg solubility limit or the concentration at which a gel layer forms a further sudden increase in delta p gives a temporary increase in permeate flow but this decreases to a maximum steady state flux as the gel layer becomes thicker and increases hydraulic resistance ultrafiltration systems generally operate close to the limiting flux which occurs at pressure differences from 2 bar to 3.5 bar the change in flux with concentration is shown in the figure and semi log plots of this type can be extrapolated to zero flux to determine the value of cg the gel concentration ranges from 10% to 50% weight for various proteins and is about 70 weight percent for latex suspensions the flux increases with velocity past the membrane surface because of the increase in value of kc and the flux is low for high bulk concentrations now we move to the topic for simple models for solvent flux pure water flux through a membrane linearly increases with applied pressure delta p in the case of ultrafiltration however the increase of flux with pressure drop is slow and the flux levels off to a constant value at high delta p this constant flux which is independent of the resistance to flow offered by the membrane is called the limiting flux the limiting flux as shown in the figure increases with increasing cross flow velocity or decreasing bulk concentration of the solute increasing cross flow velocity enhances the mass transfer coefficient and reduces the solute concentration cm in the vicinity of the membrane a lower solute concentration in the bulk has a similar effect on the limiting flux There are three commonly known simple models for solvent flux the first of which is the resistance model in this case if substantial concentration polarization occurs in ultrafiltration the retained high molecular weight solute may form a thin cake at the membrane surface the thin cake offers resistance to solvent transport the equation for the solvent flux jw can be related to membrane resistance capital rm and the specific cake resistance small rc a plot of 1 over jw square versus d for a depth in batch filtration should be linear the values of rm and rc can be calculated from the slope of that straight line plot 
the resistance for flow through the cake can be calculated using the kozni karman relation. Now the second one, the gel polarization model. Under the effect of concentration polarization, the solid concentration at the membrane surface may be even an order of magnitude larger than that in the bulk liquid. Solutes such as polymer or proteins may form a gel if the limiting concentration Cg is reached. At steady state, a constant thickness of the gel and the limiting flux J infinity are attained. When Kl is the mass transfer coefficient, the limiting flux is given by the second equation. In the special case that the solute rejection is high, we assume that Cp is very much less than Cb and Cs. Now for the third model, that is the osmotic pressure model. In this case, the conclusion is derived from the Van Hoff equation and the osmotic pressure of a macromolecule can be described by a power law dependence on concentration. Using these, we reach the third equation where the flux is described using the difference of delta B and delta pi. Now we move on to describe the applications of ultrafiltration divided by industries. Some of the major applications of ultrafiltration are in the following industries, that is dairy. Here, the use of ultrafiltration membranes is growing significantly in the concentration and purification of milk proteins across the globe. For biotechnology and pharmaceuticals, ultrafiltration has the ability to effectively remove pyrogens and endotoxins from solutions, which is critical to the quality control and the production of biopharmaceutical products. In the case of food industry, ultrafiltration membranes provide optimal flux and retention rates important for the concentration of gelatin and removal of microorganisms and bacteria. Moving forward with wastewater treatment industry, in this case with the ability to reject particulates, bacteria, proteins and polysaccharides, ultrafiltration can be used in combination with other technologies and the reduction of containment loads and wastewater effluents. And that wraps up the video for us. Thank you for watching.